Hey guys, name is Jaron Villiers. Currently a student at Thrust Institute of Maintenance. I'm gonna show you how to do a flat patch. Um, I can explain what's going on on the board here. I'm gonna explain what's gonna happen with the rivet, rivet spacing, edge spacing. Generally the process of how it's done, little things that you do to make things a little bit better, make things stronger, make things so that they're not gonna break again. You've got your obvious tools, drill with a 964th drill bit or number 40. You've got a center punch for making sure you can get the rivets in the correct sp spot and then make sure the drill doesn't walk around. Notebook for writing down numbers, writing down, like I said, edge, edge spacing, rivet spacing, the number rivet you're using. This one is a 4-5, 5-4. Right here we have Clico pliers. These are Clicos. Whenever you're drilling and you've got your holes and you've got them in the correct spots, you use this, it binds those two pieces of metal together. These are, before you put in the Clicos, these just hold two pieces of metal just by clamping them, just as is. These are the, these are the AN470 uh, AD 5-4 rivets that we're gonna be using today. And then this is a deburring tool. Whenever you drill the holes, there's a bit of excess metal that slides around, just creates a rough edge and it's not good. Whenever you're riveting and you don't deburr it, those pieces of metal will flatten out and you won't get a good seal between them. You'll just kind of screw it all up just because corrosion will build up, um, it won't be seating correctly, the stem will probably come out bad. Those are a lot of different reasons to do it, but generally speaking, it should be good practice to just do it without needing to know those things. Over here, I have the size squares I'm gonna be, use, be using. So these are six inch and I've got a five inch square over here. I have a line here that I will be cutting the edges off so that whenever you're doing these patches, you don't want the edge to be sticking into the other piece of metal. You don't want that, that stress point to be able to form something new that you're gonna to have to fix later. I still need to lay out the rivet pattern. Now it's just cutting. So you have to do a little bit of lining up. Bring it down slightly, make sure that it's make sure that it's lined up correctly. So now we've got our six by six patch. Just gonna set that to the side for now. Now we're cutting the five by five patch. Excess usable metal goes to the side. Usually put it down there or to the side of the machine just so that somebody else who needs to do it has that right there. Now what we're doing is just getting those edges off just so that these aren't exactly perfect, but for demonstration purposes, I think it's just gonna be fine. Always want to file your edges, make sure that they're fine. So now I've got our two pieces of metal cut out. I usually like to keep the film on just because it's easier to mark with the markers. But another thing that a lot of people like to do, including myself, take some blue tape. Just because it's easier to draw on top of the blue tape, it's easier to mark on top of the blue tape, it's easier to keep things on top of the blue tape, and also you're not scratching with the metal whenever you're doing it. So a big thing is keeping the metal free of nicks and scratches and anything that's gonna keep corrosion from getting in there, right? So you can just kind of fold these over if you so choose. First things first, you need your you need the rivet number because it tells you the diameter and the length of the rivet. What you need to find out rivet spacing, what you need to find out um, edge distance, how the pattern's going to go out, how the pattern's going to look, how it should look. Now, of course, go into the maintenance manual of the plane that you're going to be fixing, and that's going to give you a lot of information on how to do it, what it should look like, what it would look like in the end. So I'm doing 2D and 2D for rivet spacing and edge distance. So my rivet spacing is going to be half inch. So that's 0.5. And then the edge distance is also going to be 0.5. 
So now that we know that, grab our ruler, make sure it's on the tenth section. So there's my point five. So that's going to be my edge distance from the edge, right? You need that for all of the edges. This is what, 2.6, so half of that's 1.3. So let's make a little mark here just to find the center of what this is. This is just to find the center of, find the center of it so that you can find a general spot for where you're gonna put your first rivets because your first rivets are gonna be where everything else goes off of. 2.6 again. Yeah, riveting is, uh, it's not complicated in my opinion, but it's definitely time consuming. Um, as you do it more, you get a better feel of the pacing and what's supposed to happen when. And then that'll be right there. But I've got my two, and they're lined up. Get a cross section. Also, if you do the blue tape like I'm doing, um, you don't have to draw it here and then redraw it here. So I'm going to mark little X's. Let's try and use a sharpie this so that I can see it a little bit better about where my first rivets are going to be. I just want to see the distance between here and here, just over an inch. And we'll do this, so then we'll... .45. This one's most likely also under the inch, .9. It. Again, it's not perfect. I know it's not perfect. Five. That's over our minimum, so that's fine. Um, you can go over the minimum. I generally like to stick near it. What I like to do is I'll take one of these corners, I'll line it up right here and then I'll have an extra X. This is what these are used for. You just take these and you can just bind the metal together. Being drilled everywhere at all points in time. But that's why you use, that's why you use your, your stamps, your punches because they make a little indent right there that allows your drill and it can really, so like that's not going anywhere. Hold this. Now you've got a perfect centered hole right there. Now what we do, we take one of our Clecos. That's why I've got the Cleco pliers and you just put it in there and it holds it all together. So I'm gonna do one more and replace it and then I'll be able to take off these clamps. After that, you just The main goal, if you're doing a patch, it means that there's something, something is dented or dinged or something that cannot be repaired by normal means has to be replaced. Um, so you, the main thing you need to be sure whenever you're doing this is that the doubler, the patch itself, retains the same strength that the structure does. Now after, after I do all these holes, I'm going to take this deburring tool, I'm going to take the metal off and I'm going to deburr this, the inside, the inside of this piece, and the outside of this piece. So I've got to burn all these holes about four times. Take the Clico pliers, take the Clicos out, and now we have two pieces of metal. I'm just going to mark real quick right here, right here. That, that's the orientation because 
they're not exactly straight. See, these are, this is what happens. These are burrs, right? And there's, it's hard to see on camera, it's hard to see in general, but when you drag your finger across, it's very, very apparent. And that's what, that's what separates the metal, that's what causes corrosion. That's why you take them off. Just so I know the orientation that they're in because now I have to deburr all those holes. The objective isn't actually to like actually take all the metal off. You're not countersinking it, you're just getting that burr off. When you look in the rivets for it, so I like to use four clicos. Personally, I like to use four. I know some people want to do less. I do the edges first. So generally, you do them one at a time, but in the end result, it would look like this. You'd have them all in a row and you'd be able to take all the clicos out. These are all size three times. You need the bucking bar. There's a piece of cardboard, piece of cardboard in here so you're not screwing up the metal. For less, put my clico pliers away. Usually if you hold the gun wrong like this or this or this or this, you get a nice little indent on the side. Yeah. So like for sake of understanding, let's say you did this and you did this. You get a nice little smiley face right there, which is what you don't want. It's right up there, which is not what you want. It's a dent in the metal. It doesn't look good. It doesn't paint good. It doesn't, basically it doesn't look good. That's, <laughs> that's number one, especially you're doing it for like customers. Another thing you don't want to happen is, if you look right here, these two are straight. This one it, to the side, it's not, it's not centered, it's not as good as these. You want them to look pretty, you want them to be straight, you want them to seat correctly, right? So this one off center, crooked like that is not good. Another good way to indicate that your rivet is done is the tone of the rivet. Whenever it finishes, it'll get more pingy, like ding. So that's another good way. Instead of just looking, you know, you can actually tell by the sound of it. So now that I've got like a lot of these rivets in, now the whole thing will actually just now it holds itself, right? So now we go around. This one's a little too flat. So the best one here is most likely this one right here. This is a little flat. You don't want it to go too much. You don't want it to go too, like, too little. There's definitely like a nice middle ground. There's like a sweet spot you want to hit. And um, that's hard to hit. The reason I'm putting one up here is because I don't want the whole metal to. Ideally, the best way to do this is in a star pattern. So that the metal uniformly pushes towards the thing. Okay. But in this case, I'm just kind of willy nillying it. So that one's too flat. 
That one's like way small. And that is my patch. It's not too bad. It's not great. It's not perfect, but the techniques are demonstrated correctly. So that's how you do a liver patch. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching.